Hi and welcome to Jefferson Photography Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3 tutorial. Today we'll be doing a quick tutorial on how to take an average picture like the one that you see right here and turn it into something a lot more brighter and more vibrant. Stay tuned and we'll go through the individual parts. So the first thing you're going to do is hit the develop button up here and this will bring you into the develop menu. Uh, so first thing that you should do after that is in the basic menu increase the temperature a bit brighter sorry a bit warmer uh, that'll bring out a bit more of the colors of the picture and giving it a more sort of yellowish hue to it uh, next thing I'd work on is the blacks the blacks are really what give the picture the the punch that you're looking for so on an outdoor picture that's not too dark I'd say one like this we can increase it to about 22 would be a nice nice one. you can already see the picture coming out uh, contrast will make it a little bit more punchy as well throw that to 10. Uh, clarity, I usually hit it around 50 for every picture I do, depending on where the scene of the picture is taken. And vibrance and saturation, usually about 5, because if you do those up too much, you know, the picture will start looking a little fake. The next part of the develop menu that you'll be using is the tone curve. Um, some people don't touch it at all. I like to give it a slight S shape to it. I usually do this by, once again, depending on the picture. In this case, I'll increase the highlights to about 10, the lights to about 5, and you can decrease the darks about negative 5 and the shadows to about negative 10. As you can see, this will give the a bit of a curve on the top and bottom um, areas of it. And that's all I usually do for the tone curve. With the detail menu, I also only touch it a bit. Uh, you want to only increase the sharpness a bit of every picture just to make it stand out that extra little bit. Uh, I usually do it about between 25 and 75 depending on the picture. Outdoors with a lot of small branches, we'll keep it at 25. Masking will cover up a bit of the artifacts it makes, uh, as well noise reduction and luminance. Make that equal there. Uh, contrast, change it up to about 10 as well. And that's about all you'll do for the detail menu. When you use a lens with a wider focal length, such as this one that was taken at 18 millimeters, uh, there's going to be a bit of a um, bubble in it. Uh, so if you enable a correction, you can see it sort of take that bubble shape out and sort of straighten the image out a bit more. It should auto detect the lens. If not, they have a bunch of ones that built in that you can select from it. The final step that I usually do is add a bit of post crop beginning to the picture. So what I will usually do is decrease it to about negative 15 or 10 depending on the picture. Um, gives black edges around it. Uh, this, the midpoint, I will adjust to between 40 and 35 as well just to give it that extra little depth. We'll just give it after you've done all this, you've pretty much completed your edit. Uh, you can click between the before and after views with this button here. And there you can see uh, the complete difference of the picture. The two differences. A big difference after editing and not editing. And if you do this, it does take time, but it makes your photos look a lot better. Anyways, until next time, good luck and keep taking pictures.